Adam Tooze, a famous British economic historian, he wrote an article in which he compares the financial support that went to Ukraine compared the first five months of 2022 to, to the, the, the first five months of 2023. The financial aid that went to Ukraine was something like 66 billion euros, and it reduced to 25 billion. And this is not the worst part, because the financial aid for 2024, from 2024 to 2027, for three years, it's going to be something like 50 billion euros. You see how, how this, this financial aid to Ukraine is reducing. And yeah. we, 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 we can understand this. The, this Zelensky's, where does this Zelensky's frustration come from? You see, this financial support is reducing. We have, we have this uh, failed counteroffensive. We have this, the West is running out of ammunition. How do you see this? What's your take on this? <laughs> Ukraine is a dead country walking. That's, you know, it's like, uh, it's like a, individual that has cancer that's in the final stages of life they need hospice care uh, ukraine is a country that's on the verge of receiving hospice care word if if the united states stops sending money and, and and materiel weapons tomorrow ukraine would be would collapse within a week or two at the most whatever money is now given to ukraine does not change its fundamental deficits and weaknesses. It does not have an ample supply of trained manpower that it can put on the battlefield front. Um, it, for the most part, there is not widespread enthusiasm in Ukraine to sign up or join the military forces. So there are multiple videos coming out every week, every day almost, of Ukrainian police, military officials, uh, chasing people down, men down, <clears throat> beating them, hog tying them, forcing them to join up. So, you know, that's, that, that's one problem right there. Uh, the casualties that Ukraine is suffering on the battlefield are not, there's, there's not an ample reserve that can go in to replace those casualties. So the Ukraine really is faced with having to rebuild an army without having any safe, secure bases, training facilities in Ukraine. They're going to have to rely on training facilities outside of Ukraine. And then you get to the problem of weapon systems. They don't have one kind of tank that they're using. They have multiple varieties. Um, so the Challenger from the Brits and the Leopards from the Germans and promise them one the Abrams, maybe they'll, they'll show up. You get Bradley fighting vehicles. You've got different vehicles from the French and from the Finnish. I mean, it's, it's just a hodgepodge. And this, it, you know, this is not uniform. Remember, the concept in the Army is people wear uniforms, and the Army's conduct is uniform. It has one standard, one procedure, one way of doing things so that you don't enter multiple ways of doing things and create confusion and chaos. Then you have the problem of the shortage of ammunition. And then you have the problem of no effective air cover because their combat aircraft have been shot down or re relegated to just flying around their own airfields and not getting close to Russian air defense systems. No effective helicopters, no effective mobile air defense, and no effective mobile artillery. What is going right for Ukraine? The answer is nothing. In this NATO summit, do you think we, we <clears> talked <throat> about this NATO summit before, but now after this summit, what 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 do you think about this summit? What what the gain of what's the gain of Ukraine in this summit? It was it accomplished nothing. It it was a sound and fury meaning nothing. Uh, to paraphrase Shakespeare. Um, what happened? Ukraine was not admitted 
to NATO. Sweden got sort of a green light, maybe, from Turkey, even though after initially touting it as, oh yeah, Turkey's approved it, Erdogan shows up after being told by Biden, well, you know, the U.S. Congress still has to approve your F-16, so that deal's not done. So Erdogan goes, okay, yeah, my con, my legislature has to approve the Swedish deal, and boy, they're not going to get around to it till October. Uh, but a couple of countries oh, to promise Ukraine, oh, yeah, we're going to give you more money, more weapons. Don't worry. It, it, it'll be there. Uh, there was a cartoon figure in the United States uh, called Popeye, and this character, Wimpy, was always going around wanting to borrow money so he could go buy a hamburger. And that's sort of where you know, Ukraine is right now. They're like Wimpy from Popeye. You know, I'll gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today. I'll gladly pay you next year if you just send me those tanks, those F-16s, those attackums, those cluster bombs. And whatever weapon system is sent doesn't provide any kind of immediate solution or uh, threat, really, to Russia because those weapon systems come to p people who are not trained to operate them, number one. The process of procedure to train them to operate those systems is extended. So it means we're looking at easy until December, January of next year. And frankly, Ukraine doesn't have that much time. Uh, I, I think the Russians are in the process of conducting uh, a variety of operations along the front line that are going to force Ukraine to redeploy its forces and in the process, destroy them in place at those points, which will then put Russia in a position to conduct a, a massive counteroffensive that will uh, allow them to, I think, capture all of all territory uh, to the east of the Dnieper. Uh, beside all of this ammunition that they are receiving from different countries, they have foreign mercenaries there. Colombians. Yeah. They have. Irish, how how they how they connect these mercenaries? Since February of 2022, you've had a number of U.S. former U.S. Marines and U.S. Army Special Forces personnel that have gone to Ukraine to fight. They had previous experience, combat experience in both uh, either you Iraq or you or Afghanistan or both. Uh, you have yet to find a single one that has said, boy, this war in Ukraine is a piece of cake. This is, this is easy. We've got, man, we've got powerful weapons, and the Russians are terrible, and man, we're just crushing them. Not one. They all have the same message, which is, this is the most horrific, unbelievable experience of my life. We never experienced anything like this in Afghanistan or Iraq. The artillery, the aerial bombardments, it's, it's a nightmare, they say. And a lot of them, when they come to that point, say, I've had enough, I'm getting out. They're not staying. So um, just, just because you got a group of mercenaries all jumbled together in an international force, that doesn't, you know, they're not a, they're not a major tactical force that's going to shift things on the battlefield. A few competent soldiers, they may be able to kill a few more Russians, but they're going to wind up dead in the end. And it's not going to change one thing on the battlefield. You see, instead of having all these information, considering all these information that you gave us, they're, they're considering these cluster bombs. Yeah. They're, they're considering sending... <clears throat> Macron said there he's prepared to send long-range missiles to Ukraine. And today it came out that United States is going to buy some Hawk missiles from Taiwan to send to Ukraine. And why why Biden is so willing to continue this this support financially or with weapons to Ukraine? But his, his political reputation is on the line. They have. They have bet uh, all, they're really, they're like a degenerate gambler. They've bet all their money and now have had to take out some loans 
uh, with the mafia in order to continue gambling. And the gamble was that they were going to defeat Russia and in defeating Russia via their proxy in Ukraine, that Biden would have uh, be able to use that as one of the, the things to run on for his accomplishments of his presidency that he could run on. Well, that's not turning out to be an accomplishment. It's turning out to be a disaster. And they are, um, you know, think of Ukraine as the Titanic and Russia as the iceberg. We know how that confrontation came to an end. The Titanic was sunk. Ukraine is sinking. It's taking on water and its ability. There's no other ship in sight that can sail to its rescue, including the United States. And yet uh, Biden just yesterday uh, announced publicly a decision he had made last Thursday to call up what they call the ready reserve and select reserve. So it, it, up to 3,000 uh, troops. These are not significant in terms of changing the face of the battlefield, but they are significant from a symbolic standpoint of the U.S. calling up reserves to go fight the Russians, because that's what they're being called for, to go fight the Russians. In tandem with that, uh, the United States is deploying three brigades, so that's you know, figure 5,000 troops per brigade, total of 15,000 armored brigades, so the tanks and Bradley fighting vehicles. They're deploying them as well into Eastern Europe along the Polish border, maybe even into Poland, possibly into Ukraine. If that happens, the Russians will attack and destroy those units. Uh, so. You've got the, the Biden, and then uh, there are B-52s and F-35 jets arriving at airports, uh, military airports up in Alaska, which is making it, uh, is certainly being noticed by the Russians, who are going to have to assume that these, uh, these aircraft are being assembled for an attack on Russia. And so Russia will have to respond in kind. So it's a very dangerous, dangerous time and yet the United States is not in a position to fight and defeat Russia. Just the opposite. It will be beaten and beaten badly. And that will mean uh, maybe the end of U.S. leadership in the world and certainly the end of NATO. You see, Lavrov said this sending F-16 to, to Ukraine is so dangerous because they're capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Right. How how dangerous gonna get be gonna be if if they're sending all these weapons to Ukraine? Because we know well, how the, we we know the the government the, the, the Zelensky administration is not, you cannot trust them. Yeah, well, if you look look at exactly the last set, I'm looking up the last sentence of what Lavrov said. Um, he said the last the last three sentences. The aggressive steps of unfriendly states create an existential threat for Russia. There is no doubt about this. We will have to defend our right to free and sovereign development with all available means. That means nuclear weapons. He says, these steps create an existential threat to Russia. We'll defend ourselves with all available means. The U.S leaders better be paying attention to this because it is certain that if, if push comes to shove and there is, a, even if the Russians perceive a nuclear threat from the West, they will take action and they will use nuclear weapons. Yeah. You see that uh, despite all of, all of the, the information, I think that Biden is so willing to continue this war until 2024 for his race, for his propaganda, the I don't, I don't see Nima. I don't see how he does. You can't, you know. Okay, so you send more money to Ukraine. Where are the troops going to come from? Who's going to be able to carry out military operations when they're dead or wounded? I, you know, how does that happen? Unless, unless the United States tries to insert troops, and then at that point again, we're talking about escalating this to the level of a nuclear war. They, they, I don't. I, I think it's impossible for them to string this out for another twelve to fourteen months. 
Larry, do we know how many US mercenaries, not not private ones, are in Ukraine now? No, not well, not offhand. Not we had that leak from uh, the Jack Teixeira, that airman, uh, on Discord, and within that they did have a number of identifying both U.S. military and and, in, and diplomatic personnel, including CIA personnel. And I think it was less than a hundred. Uh, I think one of the things that we are likely to see become more frequent over the next in the next few weeks is the that uh, Russia will hit joint operation centers, tactical operation centers, where there are U U.S., Ukrainian, NATO military personnel assembled to conduct planning for uh, future operations. Russians will hit that and will be killing not just Ukrainians, but NATO troops, including U.S. troops. Because did you see this video of an Irish mercenary? He's talking about the situation on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's that's what I mean, he's again, that's he didn't have prior military experience in Afghanistan or Iraq. And it was terrifying him. But, you know, you can see similar videos and written commentary from uh, former U.S. soldiers and Marines who have been in combat, who've been fighting in, in Ukraine. And are just stunned by the difference. We 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 know that Washington Post said that in in an in an article said that after Zelensky's frustration, the the U.S. was considering in NATO summit, the U.S. was considering the withdrawal of of the invitation to Ukraine. How fragile is this invitation? They're they're they're, they're literally playing a game with Ukraine. Well. There, there is not going to be a Ukraine to invite into NATO when Russia is finished with it. You know, the, the notion that Ukraine, as it has been known, uh, is, is not going to be intact. I see, you know, Russia is going to, I, you know, unless they have a change of heart, they're going to put it into the grain deal. Into the grain deal means no more uh, income to Ukraine via that route. Um, Russia will shut down the Black Sea and Ukrainian access to the Black Sea. Um, then, you know, Ukraine doesn't have many choices. Uh, and, they're, and they're utterly, entirely dependent upon Biden and uh, the, both the Democrats and Republicans. Up to this point, members of Congress have been willing to keep pouring money into this. But once it becomes very clear that Ukraine has been decisively defeated on the ground, I think the enthusiasm for continuing that funding will evaporate and evaporate rapidly. Despite Zelensky telling that he's not willing to have an election in, in Ukraine, today we had Kiev mayor talking about he, he's considering to, to run against Zelensky. Yeah, Klitschko. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Is is there? Do you think that it seems to me that they're gonna they, they're considering replacing Zelensky with some some with, with another person? How do you see this? Well, I I think you know Klitschko has the potential to not be as strident and as crazy as Zelensky. Uh, at least Klitschko is not a cocaine addict. But um, uh, again, they're. This, you know, we call this moving, moving the deck chairs around on the Titanic. You can put the chairs on the second deck. You can put them on the third deck. Hey, put them on the fourth deck. Move them, move them to the bow. No, move them to uh, the, the, the stern. And then the ship sinks. So it didn't really matter whether, where you put the, the chairs. And that's what, that's what Ukraine is sinking. There, there's no way, no other way to put it. They, they have not had, by definition, uh, an army is defeated when it attacks and cannot penetrate the defenses of the opponent, and the opponent attacks it, and the army retreats. Both things are happening right now in Ukraine. The Ukrainians are both retreating, and they're being slaughtered in their assaults. Beside the problems Ukraine has with Russia today, 
we have this failed state that uh, EU cannot absorb because because these huge financial problems is Europe in 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 its current figure in its current situation is capable of absorbing Ukraine? Let's think that let's assume that Russia has no problem with that. Yeah, well, Europe itself is in economic trouble. Uh, Germany is in the process of deindustrializing itself. Ukraine is talking about cutting off the natural gas that still flows from Russia through Ukraine to Europe. They're going to cut that off, claiming that Europe can get by without it when that they can't. That's not true. So, uh, you know, I don't see any country in Europe. You know, France is torn apart by these ethnic divisions uh, from all the North Africans that have come in. Uh, and so I don't see any country in Europe willing to step up and take sort of custodial responsibility for bringing Ukraine in and then, you know, sponsoring them and taking care of the problems that will attend their entry into the EU. Uh, EU. Putin, in his last statements, he said that one of the reasons for this special military operation was the Ukraine membership of NATO. And he said that this membership cannot save Ukraine. Cannot it 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 doesn't increase the Ukraine security? How do you see his statement? This is the man who, when he says when he says something, he means it. Yeah, yeah. Well, but if if Ukraine is brought into NATO now, it will mean probably the immediate destruction of NATO. Russia has made it clear that's a red line; it will not allow that to be crossed. They will view that as an existential threat. So. Either believe the Russians or don't believe them. And if you don't believe them, you're putting your uh, your life or your country at risk. Seems that the only sane leader in Europe is Viktor Orban. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. Uh, I guess the uh, president of Bulgaria does uh, has been talking some sense as well. But the rest of them are just, uh, you know, batshit crazy. Even 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 with this cluster bombs, Trump said this means World War Three. Yeah. This is a big statement from Donald Trump. Yeah, I don't. The cluster bombs are not going to trigger uh, a nuclear response from Ukraine, uh, Russia. Uh, Russia has its own cluster bombs and can use that on Ukrainian troop formations. Uh, the, you remember the, the cluster bombs are not some magic solution. You know, remember they were developed primarily to hit targets that were in a jungle, uh, dispersed. But uh, now the you know the biggest push to to, to uh, declare them illegal is because they're they're small bomblets about the size of a softball. Here, let me show you. About like that. Kids love to pick this up and throw it. And that's the danger. Now, a lot of them, when the canister opens up and the bomblets are scattered, they don't all explode. And then they'll be there for you know six months, a year, two years, five years, 10 years. Or they're still finding some from 50 years ago. And kids pick them up and boom, they go off. It blows off a hand, blows off an arm, blinds them. It's just, it's a terrible terrible weapon, which doesn't have a lot of military utility. You see, Lloyd Austin, in his interview with CNN, he said when 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 he he was asked that if he knows the the destruction of these cluster bombs, he said, yes, I know because I've used them. Do we know where he used these cluster bombs? He was bragging. He was he's he's lying. He's not old enough to have fought in Vietnam. So if you didn't use them in Vietnam, where do you use them? They, they, to my knowledge, they, they've not been used in Iraq or Afghanistan. So where else? Somalia? No. Panama? No. Uh, so I, I, I just, uh, Sudan? Iraq, Afghanistan? Yemen? No. 
No, I, to my knowledge, they've, they've never been used, uh, uh, particularly in civilian areas, since the Vietnam War, simply because they're so problematic. Schultz today said that he's he's willing to talk with Putin about this war in Ukraine. Do you think that Putin going to care about his willingness to talk with him? To, to willingness to talk to Schultz or willingness to Schultz? To talk? To Schultz. Talking to Schultz, you might as well talk to your dog. Yeah, to have more success talking to your dog, at least your dog is friendly and loyal. Uh, Schultz, Schultz is, uh, you know, he's a useless figurehead. He has no power. He has no clout. So there's nothing to be gained by talking to him. And Orban said that if this war, if they decide to end this war and and just 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 undo these sanctions all the economic problems in europe are going to be solved and it depends on the us and the us administration on the biden administration if they decide to go on peace talks to resolve this problem in ukraine it can be solved by any moment how how do you see his statements well yeah there's i think he's overly optimistic Um, yeah, any of the sanctions will m- help create conditions where the healing, the economic healing of Europe can start, but it's certainly not going to be overnight. Um, the efforts to create an alternative financial system in BRICS is well underway, and they'll be able to move forward with that regardless of what happens or status relationship with, with the EU. Similarly, getting back into SWIFT, um, the, the, the Russians have learned the hard way that you don't want to put your assets into any bank that can be under the control of the West because they can always free your assets at a, just the drop of a pen without you having really done anything, but they declare you as a violator and therefore they're going to go take your take your money. So I think all of that comes into play that uh, Russia's in no hurry to get back into the Western international economic order. It's realized it's got the clout and the resources to create its own international economic order under BRICS. If if we think it, if this war comes to an end and the United States and Russia decide to go on talks, on peace talks, do you think that Russia going to solicit to, to China and Brazil and other countries to participate in these talks? Uh, no, not initially, but, but um, Russia Russia is not going to be compelled to negotiate. Russia will compel the West to negotiate. The West will be crying out for relief because of the des- devastating defeat that Ukraine and NATO will suffer. And so at that point, The, the West will finally be looking for an off-ramp. And, uh, you know, I, I expect Russia to put some, forward some very tough terms that will be difficult to swallow, but not impossible to swallow. And for the last question, do we know what's going on? The last changes on the battlefield and this counteroffensive for Ukraine? Uh, because they're talking about, Larry, because they're talking about they're gaining land, they're gaining kilometers of land. Who, Ukraine or Russia? Ukraine. <laughs> no, no, you, yeah, Ukraine is lying because all you have to do is go to the Ukraine live update map, and that shows what they are claiming they've actually accomplished and taken. So that hasn't happened. The exact opposite has happened. Russia is moving forward and is taking kilometers away from Ukraine, forcing the Ukrainians to retreat. I see. And that's particularly north of uh, uh, Bakhmut. I see. Thank you, Larry, for being with us. It's always a I pleasure to talk with you. Well, I always enjoy being having a chance to chat with you, my friend. Thank you so Have much. Have a good weekend. You too. Thank you so much. All right. Muito obrigado. <laughs> Muito obrigado. Ciao, Larry. Ciao. Ciao.